Hi, I'm Shruti. I'm a PhD student at Carnegie Mellon University, and I will be presenting our work on OCR post-correction for endangered language texts. Endangered languages are those that are in danger of becoming extinct. Language endangerment primarily occurs when the number of native speakers in a language dwindles while younger generations shift to using other languages. This map shows all of the endangered languages around the world. 43% of the world's 6,000 living languages are classified as endangered. There are ongoing efforts to document and preserve these languages. Several endangered languages have revitalization programs, including those that focus on language learning and education within the community. Language technologies can help advance these efforts by providing natural language processing tools, such as automatic speech recognition, dictionary induction, and machine translation for endangered languages. However, building NLP models requires data for training and evaluation. For most endangered languages, finding any data at all is challenging. This has resulted in endangered languages being underrepresented in language technologies. In many endangered languages, textual data does exist. These include cultural texts published by communities that speak endangered languages, educational materials for learning the language, and data collected by documentary linguists. Unfortunately, this data is typically locked away in formats that are not machine readable. Common sources include paper books of cultural texts, handwritten notes by documentary linguists, and PDFs and web pages with varied structures. A natural question to ask here is how many such documents exist as potential sources of endangered language data? We first looked at the General Purpose Internet Archive, which contains scanned images of printed books from all around the world. We found over 11,000 books that were labeled as containing text in an endangered language. Next, we looked at linguistic archives focused on endangered languages and found over 20,000 documents in these archives. Given the large number of documents that are potential sources of data, Digitizing all of these texts will be extremely beneficial not only to develop NLP systems for endangered languages, but also aid documentation and preservation efforts by documentary linguists and the communities that speak endangered languages. Additionally, digitization will make these texts available for searching and online browsing by both learners and speakers of these languages. Typically, extracting the text from scanned images of printed books, such as this example from a book of folk tales in the endangered language Greco, requires optical character recognition, or OCR. The OCR system extracts the text content present in the image. Most OCR systems need large amounts of training data in and transcribed images for training. These resources are unfortunately unavailable for most endangered languages. Instead, we focus on OCR post-correction, which is the task of automatically correcting recognition errors made by an existing OCR system. Given an image to extract text from, we use a general purpose OCR system to get a first pass transcription of the text. These general purpose systems are trained on many high resource languages and can recognize characters from multiple scripts. Most endangered languages adopt standard scripts as their writing systems, and the general purpose OCR system can recognize some of the characters correctly as it has likely seen the same script in the training data of some high resource language. As we can see, the first pass OCR recognizes several of the correct of the characters correctly, but it does have some errors. Given the noisy first pass OCR of the image, a post correction model attempts to correct all of the errors in the OCR text. Post correction is a sequence to sequence task with the first pass OCR as the source and the corrected transcription as the target. Existing methods for post correction rely on large amounts of manually corrected transcriptions for training and even unsupervised methods rely on a strong language model. Most endangered languages don't have these resources. To develop a post-correction method for endangered language texts, 
What information can we use to ease learning in this severely under-resourced setting? Translations of the text in a high-resource language can add helpful signal to the model. In fact, such translations are commonly found in endangered language texts, especially often in the dominant language of the region or the language spoken by the linguist involved in documentation. In this work, we focus on texts that contain such translations. The translations can be in various formats, such as split columns in a single page, interlinear glosses, or translations of handwritten notes typed in a separate document. We first present a benchmark dataset of manually transcribed images for OCR post-correction on three critically endangered languages. Next, we analyze the performance of state-of-the-art OCR systems and study whether general purpose OCR systems are robust to the data scarce setting of endangered languages. Then we identify what types of errors are made by these systems. Finally, we present an OCR post-correction method tailored to data scarce settings, which reduces the word error rate by 34% on average over the three languages in our dataset. The first set of transcribed pages in our dataset are in the endangered language Ainu, which comes from northern Japan. The book contains Ainu poetry with its Japanese translation. Our dataset also contains transcribed pages from a book of Greco folk tales. Greco is an endangered Greek dialect spoken in southern Italy, and the book contains the Italian translation of the Greco text. The third endangered language we focus on is Yaka which is spoken in Nepal. Our dataset contains the manual transcription of Yaka text from three children's books. The books also contain translations in both Nepali and English. We use the Google Vision OCR system to get a first pass transcription on all the images in our dataset. This is a general purpose OCR system trained on 60 languages in 29 scripts. While it isn't trained on any endangered languages, it supports the scripts that the languages in our dataset use. We measure OCR performance with word error rate, which represents the percentage of words that the OCR system recognizes incorrectly. This graph shows the word error rate for the three languages in our dataset using the Google Vision OCR. As we can see, the system does recognize the majority of words correctly which gives our post-correction model a reliable starting point. However, there is considerable room for improvement in all three languages. Next, we inspect the errors made by the OCR system. We observe that 85% of all errors are caused by specific characteristics of endangered languages. These can broadly be classified into two types. The first is mixed script errors. More specifically, we observe that the writing system adopted by the endangered language may not be adequate for comprehensively representing the language. To overcome this, characters are often borrowed from other scripts, such as the mixed Greek and Latin scripts used in Greco and the use of IPA symbols in Yaka. Existing OCR systems can't handle multiple scripts within a single word and misidentify these mixed, scripts, mixed script characters. The second cause of error is uncommon diacritics, which occur when there are characters that are part of the standard script but are rare in high resource languages, such as the uncommon characters shown here in the Greco and Yaka examples. Since these are likely infrequent in the training data, the OCR system is unable to identify them correctly. In order to fix the errors in the first pass transcription, we propose a post-correction method. Recall that post-correction is a sequence-to-sequence -sequence task. As a base model, we use the standard character-level encoder-decoder model with attention. Given the first pass OCR of an image, such as this example in Greco, an LSTM encodes the first pass text at the character level and the decoder LSTM generates characters of the corrected transcription based on an attention mechanism. How do we incorporate translations into the base encoder-decoder model? We use a multi-source framework 
where the first parse OCR of the high resource translation is similarly encoded by an LSTM. In this case, we have the first pass OCR of the Italian translation of the Greco text as the additional source in the model. The context vectors from both attention mechanisms are concatenated and used by the decoder to generate the corrected transcription. Apart from incorporating translations, we add modifications to the model in order to improve learning in our setting where we have an extremely amount, limited amount of training data. We introduce structural biases into the model. The first of these is a diagonal attention loss, which encourages monotonic attention. Next, we add a copy mechanism to allow the model to copy a character from the input text. Finally, we use a coverage mechanism to prevent the model from attending to the same characters repeatedly. The next adaptation to the model involves utilizing noisy first-pass OCR transcriptions for pre-training. Our dataset contains manual transcriptions for a small subset of the pages in each of the books. The remaining pages are untranscribed, and we apply the general-purpose OCR system to these untranscribed pages and use the noisy OCR text extracted for pre-training the model. The details of this method are in the paper. We conduct experiments with our proposed post-correction method evaluating the performance in terms of word error rate. Because of the small size of our dataset, we report the error rate using tenfold cross-validation averaged over five random seeds. We first look at the performance of the first pass OCR from the Google Vision system. The error rate is seen here in the graph. Next. We look at the post-correction performance of the base model, which is an encoder-decoder model with attention. As you can see, the base model doesn't work very well for improving the OCR. In fact, the error rate with this model is worse than the first pass OCR for Aino and Yaka. Finally, we look at the performance of our method, which includes all the adaptations we propose. We see that the word error rate reduces for all three languages indicating that our proposed adaptations are important for learning a good post-correction model in the endangered languages setting. If you're curious about which adaptations help the performance the most, our paper has extensive ablation studies on all three languages. In summary, we present a benchmark dataset for OCR and OCR post-correction in three critically endangered languages, Ainu, Greco, and Yaka. We extensively analyzed the performance of existing OCR systems, showing that they are not robust to the data-scarce setting of endangered languages, with the majority of errors caused by mixed scripts and uncommon diacritics present in endangered language texts. We present an OCR post-correction method adapted to the endangered languages setting, reducing the word error rate by 34% on average. The code, for our model and the benchmark data set are publicly available. Thank you for attending our presentation. Please join the live QA session during the conference for more information about our paper.